Look where we are, we're back. We're back, we're back at our home. We have a new table, AKA desk, AKA table. Hello, I am Uncle Scotty, your host for Storytime with Uncle Scotty. We have our own mugs. You know that. Uh, been some great photos of people sending in uh, pictures of them and their own mugs. Uh, keep those coming, please. Here's my shadow. I guess I didn't do my three-point lighting exactly right, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that because you know what we are worried about? Nothing. What we are concerned about? A couple things. Hydrating, washing our hands, and this book that we are reading. Now, we've been reading Pippi Longstocking, and oh my goodness, OMG, I realized when I finished the last chapter that we are now today at the last chapter. This book is 11 chapters long, and what chapter are we on? Chapter 11. That's right. This is the last chapter of Pippi Longstocking. <gasps> I know. I know that's how I feel too. Um, so with that, today is the last day that we're going to read Pippi Longstocking, and then tomorrow we're going to have a new book. New book, new book, new book. So let's stop wasting time. Don't waste time. And read this chapter. Chapter 11. Uh, 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 uh. Pippi celebrates her birthday. One day, Tommy and Annika found a letter in their mailbox. It was addressed to Tmi and Nika, T-M-M-Y and A-N-I-K-A. And when they opened it, they found a card which read, Tmi and Nika are invited to Pippi's tomorrow to her birthday party. Dress. Wear whatever you like. Shout out to T.I. Um, a lot of misspelled words in this, but that's okay because Pippi doesn't go to school, but that's okay because she's schooling at home, just like we all are. Any school right now is homeschool. Tommy and Annika were so happy that they began to skip and dance. They understood perfectly well what was printed on the card, although the spelling was a little unusual. Pippi had had a great deal of trouble writing it. To be sure, she had not recognized the letter I in school that day that she was there, but all the same, she could write a little. When she was sailing on the ocean, one of the sailors on her father's ship used to take her up on deck in the evening now and then to try to teach her how to write. Unfortunately, Pippi was not a very patient pupil. Pippi was not a very patient pupil. All of a sudden, she would say, No, Friedolf. That was his name. No, Friedolf. Bother all this learning. I can't study anymore now because I must climb the mast to see what kind of weather we are going to have tomorrow. So it was, oh, speaking of masts, remember on a sailboat, the mast is the thing that goes up where the sails are. And if we remember on reading James and the Giant Peach, the stem and the peach stuck up like a big mast. All comes back. So it was no wonder that writing didn't go so well now. One whole night she sat struggling with that invitation, and at dawn, just as the stars were paling in the sky over Villa Villacula, she tiptoed over to Tommy and Annika's house and dropped the letter into their mailbox. As soon as Tommy and Annika came home from school, they began to get all dressed up for their party. Annika asked her mother how to curl her hair, and her mother did and tied it with a big pink satin bow. Tommy combed his hair with water so that it would lie all nice and smooth. I should try to do that. He certainly didn't want any curls. Then Annika wanted to put on her very best dress, but her mother thought she'd better not, for she was seldom neat and clean when she came home from Pippi's. So Annika had to be satisfied with her next best dress, her penultimate dress. Tommy didn't care what suit he wore as long as he looked nice. I see you, Tommy. Of course, they had brought a present, bought a present for Pippi. Bought and brought, probably. They had taken the money out of their own piggy banks, and on the way home from school, they had run into the toy shop on Main Street and bought a very beautiful, well, what they had bought was secret for the time being. Ooh, cliffhanger. There it lay, mapped in green paper and tied with a great deal of string, and when they were ready, Tommy took the package and off they went, followed by their mother's warning to take good care of their clothes. Annika was to carry the package part of the way, and they were both to hold it when they handed it to Pippi. That they had agreed upon. It was already November, and dusk came early. 
When Tommy and Annika went in through the gate of Billa Billa Coola, they held each other's hands tightly because it was quite dark in Pippi's garden and the wind sighed mournfully through the old bare trees. The wind's like, <sighs> That's the sound of the wind. Seems like fall, said Tommy. It was so much pleasanter to see the lighted windows in Villa Villa Coola and to know that they were going to a birthday party. Ordinarily, Tommy and Annika rushed in through the kitchen door, but this time they went through the front door. The horse was not on the porch. Tommy gave a lively knock on the door. From inside came a low voice. Who comes in the dark night on the road to my house? Is it a ghost? or just a poor little mouse. No, Pippi, it's us, shrieked Annika. Open the door. Pippi opened the door. Oh, Pippi, why did you say that about a ghost? I was so scared, said Annika and completely forgot to congratulate Pippi. Pippi laughed heartily and opened the door to her kitchen. How good it was to come in where it was light and warm. The birthday party was to be in the kitchen because that was the pleasantest room in the house most pleasant, the pleasantest room in the house. There were only two other rooms on the first floor, the parlor, in which there was only one piece of furniture, and Pippi's bedroom. The kitchen was large and roomy, and Pippi had scrubbed it until it shone. She had put rugs on the floor and a large new cloth on the table. She had embroidered the cloth herself with flowers that certainly looked the most remarkable, but Pippi declared that such flowers grew in farthest India, so, of course, that made them all right. They were weird-looking flowers, I suppose. The curtains were drawn and the fire burned merrily. On the wood box sat Mr. Nelson, banging pot lids together. Chang, 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 chang. In the corner stood the horse, for he too had been invited to the party. Now at last, Tommy and Annika remembered that they were supposed to congratulate Pippi. Tommy bowed and Annika curtsied. And they handed Pippi the green package and said, May we congratulate you and wish you a happy birthday? Pippi thanked them and eagerly tore the package open. And there was a music box! Pippi was wild with delight. I have a music box. Have you ever seen a music box? One second. We'll go get it in a minute. She patted Tommy and she patted Annika and she patted the music box and she painted the wrapping paper. She wound up the music box and with much blinking, plonking, blinking, plonking, out came a melody that was probably supposed to be Ach du Claire Augustin. That may be a Swedish or German song. I'm not sure. I'm going to be right back. One second. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm still here. 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 Hey, I'm still here. Hey, don't worry. I'm still here. Everything's fine. Look at this music box that I have. Maybe you know this song. It's not Ach der Augustin. That was our musical guest for today on Storytime with Uncle Scotty. Hello. Let's get back to the story. I just wanted to show you what a music box was. I very rarely get to use my own music box. It's very exciting. Pippi wound and wound and seemed to forget everything else. That just happened to me. But suddenly she remembered something. Oh my goodness, you must have your birthday presents too. But it isn't our birthday, said Tommy and Annika. Pippi stared at them in amazement. No, but it's my birthday, isn't it? And I can give birthday presents too, can't I? Or does it say in your school books that such a thing can't be done? Is it something to do with that old plutification that makes it impossible? Oh, oh of course it's possible, said Tommy. It just isn't customary. But for my part, I'd be very glad to have a present. Me too, said Annika. Pippi ran into the parlor and brought back two packages from the chest. When Tommy opened, he found, he, when he opened his, he found a little ivory flute. And in Annika's package was a lovely brooch shaped like a butterfly. The wings of the butterfly were set with blue and red and green stones. When they all had their birthday presents, it was time to sit down at the table where there were all sorts of cakes and buns. 
Cakes and pies, cakes and pies. The cakes were rather peculiar in shape, but Pippi declared they were just the kind of cakes they had in China. Pippi served hot chocolate with whipped cream, and the children were just about to begin their feast when, Ma when Tommy said, when Mama and Papa have a party, the gentlemen always get cards telling them what ladies to take in to dinner. I think we ought to have cards too. Okay, said Pippi. Although it will be kind of hard for us because I'm the only gentleman here, added Tommy doubtfully. Fiddlesticks, said Pippi. Do you think Mr. Nilsson is a lady? Maybe. Of course not, I forgot Mr. Nilsson said Tommy, and sat down on the wood box and wrote on a card, Mr. Sedergren will have the pleasure of taking Miss Longstocking to dinner. Mr. Sedergren, that's me, he said with satisfaction and showed Pippi the card. Then he wrote on the next card, Mr. Nilsson will have the pleasure of taking Miss Sedergren to dinner. Okay, but the horse must have a card too, Pippi declared, even if he can't sit at the table. So Tommy, at Pippi's dictation, wrote, the horse will have the pleasure of remaining in the center where he will be served cakes and sugar. Pippi held the card under the horse's nose and said, read this and see what you think of it. As the horse had no objection to make, Tommy offered Pippi his arm and they walked to the table. Mr. Nilsson showed no intention of offering his arm to Annika, so she took a firm hold of him and lifted him up onto the table. Nor did he want any chocolate with whipped cream, but when Pippi poured water in his cup, he took it in both hands and drank. Mr. Nilsson has his own mug. Annika and Tommy and Pippi ate and ate. And Annika said if these cakes were the kind they had in China, then she intended to move to China when she grew up. When Mr. Nilsson had emptied his cup, he turned it upside down. We can't do that yet. And put it on his head. We can't do that yet either. When Pippi saw that, she did the same. But she had not quite drunk all of her chocolate, and a little steam ran down her forehead and over her nose. She caught it with her tongue and lapped it up, lapped it up. Waste not, want not, she said. Tommy and Annika lipped their cups clean before they put them on their heads. When everybody had had enough and the horse had had his share, Pippi took hold of all four corners of the tablecloth and lifted it up so that the cups and plates tumbled over each other as if they were in a sack. Then she stuffed the whole bundle in the wood box. I always like to tidy up as a little as soon as I have eaten, she said. Then it was time for games. Pippi suggested that they play a game called Don't Touch the Floor. It was very simple. The only thing one had to do was walk around the kitchen without stepping on the floor. Pippi skipped around in the twinkling of an eye, and even for Tommy and Annika, it was quite easy. You began on the drain board, and if you stretched your legs enough, it was possible to step onto the back of the stove from the stove to the wood box, and from the wood box to the hat shelf, and down onto the table, and from there across two chairs to the corner cupboard. Between the corner cupboard and the drain board was a distance of several feet, but luckily there stood the horse, and if you climbed up on him at the tail end and slid off at the head end, making a quick turn at exactly the right moment, you landed exactly on the drain board, all the way around the kitchen. When they had played this game for a while and Annika's dress was no longer her next best dress, but her next, next, next best one, and Tommy had become as black as a chimney sweep, covered in dirt, soot, they decided to think up something else. Suppose we go up in the attic and visit the ghosts, said Pippi. Annika gasped. <laughs> Are there really ghosts in the attic? She asked. Are there ghosts? Millions, said Pippi. It's just swarming with all sorts of ghosts and spirits. You trip over them whenever you walk. Shall we go up? Oh, Pippi, said Annika and looked at her. Mama says there aren't any such things as ghosts and goblins, said Tommy boldly. Boldly. And well, she might, said Pippi, because there aren't any anywhere else. All the ghosts in the world live in my attic, and it doesn't pay to try to make them move. But they aren't dangerous. They just pinch you in the arm so you get black and blue, and they howl, and they play nine pins with their heads. I think that's like bowling. Do, 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 do they really play nine pins with their heads? Sure, that's just what they do, said Pippi. Now come on, and let's go talk with them. I'm good at playing n -n 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 nine pins. Tommy didn't want to show that he was frightened. And in a way, he really did want to see a ghost. 
That would be something to tell the boys at school. Besides, he consoled himself with the thought that Ghost probably wouldn't dare to hurt Pippi. He decided to go along. Poor Annika didn't want to go under any circumstances, but then she happened to think that a tiny little ghost might sneak downstairs while she was sitting alone in the kitchen. That decided the matter. Better to be with Tommy and Pippi among thousands of ghosts than alone in the kitchen with even one little tiny ghost baby child. Pippi went first. She opened the door to the attic stairs. It was pitch dark in there. Tommy took a firm grip on Pippi, and Annika took an even firmer grip on Tommy, and so they went up. The stairs creaked and squeaked with every step. Tommy began to wonder if it wouldn't have been better to stay down in the kitchen, and Annika didn't need to wonder because she was sure of it. At last, they came to the top of the stairs and stood in the attic. It was pitch dark there, too, except where a little moonbeam shone on the floor. There were sighs and mysterious noises in every corner when the wind blew through the cracks. Hi, all you ghosts, shrieked Pippi. But if there was any ghost there, he certainly didn't answer. Well, I might have known, said Pippi. They've gone to a council meeting of the Ghost and Goblin Society. Annika sighed with relief and hoped that the meeting would last a long time. But just then an awful sound came from one of the corners of the attic. Woom, it said. And a moment later, Tommy saw something come rushing towards him in the dimness. He felt it brush his forehead and saw something disappear through a little window that stood open. He shrieked to high heaven, a ghost, a ghost. Annika shrieked with him. That poor little thing will be late for the meeting, said Pippi. If, I, if it was a ghost and not an owl, for that matter, there aren't any ghosts, she continued after a while. If anybody suggests that there are ghosts, I'll tweak him in the nose. Yes, but you said so yourself, said Annika. Did I? Is that so? said Pippi. Well, then I'll certainly tweak my own nose and she took a firm grip on her nose and tweaked it. After that, Tommy and Annika felt a little calmer. In fact, they were now so courageous that they ventured, up, ventured to go up to the window and look out over the garden. Big dark clouds sailed through the sky and they did their best to hide the moon and the wind sighed in the trees. <sighs> Tommy and Annika turned around, but then, oh horrors, they saw a white figure co coming towards them. A ghost! shrieked Tommy wildly. Annika was so scared that she couldn't even shriek. The ghost came nearer and nearer. Tommy and Annika hugged each other and shut their eyes. But then they heard the ghost say, Look what I found! Papa's nightshirt in an old sea chest over there. If I hem it up around the bottom, I can wear it. Pippi had come up to them in a nightshirt dangling around her legs. Oh, Pippi, I could have died of fright, said Annika. But night shirts aren't dangerous, Pippi assured her. They don't bite anybody except in self-defense. Pippi now decided to examine the sea chest thoroughly. She lifted it up and carried it over to the window and opened the cover so that what little moonlight there was fell on the contents of the chest. There were a great many old clothes which she threw out on the attic floor. There was a telescope, a few books, three pistols, a sword, and a bag of gold pieces. Tiddly palm and piddly day, said Pippi contentedly. It's so exciting, said Tommy. Pippi gathered everything in the nightshirt and down they went into the kitchen again. Annika was perfectly satisfied to leave the kitchen. Don't to leave the attic and go to the kitchen. Never let children handle firearms, said Pippi, and took a pistol in each hand and prepared to fire. Otherwise, some accident can easily happen, she said shooting off both pistols at once. That was a good bang, she announced, and looked up at the ceiling. The bullets had made two holes. Pippi is out there. Who knows, she said hopefully. Perhaps the bullets have gone right through the ceiling and hit some ghosts in the legs. That will teach them to think twice before they set out to scare any little innocent children again. Because even if there aren't any ghosts, why they don't, because even if there aren't any ghosts, they don't need to go around scaring folks out of their wits, I should think. Would each of you like a pistol? She asked. Tommy was enchanted, and Annika was also very much wanted a pistol, provided it wasn't loaded. Now we can organize a robber band if we want to, said Pippi. She held the telescope up to her eyes. With this, I can almost see the fleas in South America, I think, she continued. And it'll be good 
to have if we do organize a robber band. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was Tommy and Annika's father who had come to take them home. It was long past their bedtime, he said. Tommy and Annika hurried to say thank you, bid Pippi goodbye, and collect all their belongings, the flute, the brooch, and the pistols. Pippi followed her guests out to the porch and watched them disappear through the garden. They turned around to wave. The light from inside shone on her. Then she stood with her stiff red braids, dressed in her father's nightshirt, which billowed out around her feet. In one hand, she held a pistol, and in the other, the sword. She saluted. When Tommy and Annika and their father reached the gate, they heard her calling. They stopped to listen. The wind whistled through the trees so they could just barely hear what she said. I'm going to be a pirate when I grow up, she cried. Are you? The end. That's the end of Pippi Longstocking. What a fun party. They took a really odd, unexpected turn at the end, but I think it's okay because Pippi is an imaginary character and also she wants to be a pirate when she grows up. She kind of has always been a pirate. Hey, we have just finished our fourth book, James and the Giant Peach, Sideways Swords from Wayside School, Mr. Popper's Penguins, Pippi Longstocking, four big books that we've read together. That's wonderful. Thank you all so much for watching, for checking us out, for subscribing, for liking these videos. It makes a big difference and I appreciate you doing it. And I will be knack, I will be knack, and I will be back, and I will be flack, and I will be Zach, Zach Morris. We have our own mugs. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.